Welcome everybody. My name is Randy Howell and we are here to explore you. We are here to explore what are the roadblocks, what are the skills that you actually need to develop in order to develop the potential of yourself as a trader. And what we're going to be doing, first of all, I would also really like to thank FX Street and Maud and Vicki. Uh, what I particularly like about FX Street is that they're showing that they have long-term interest of their clients. Not only are they showing you how to trade, what they're doing is they're also, they're also showing you what do you need to develop on a psychological level to be able to drive the machine of your methodology, your platform. So I really thank you. Now, the other thing is if you're going to be in Dallas at the Traders Expo there, I would love for you to come by and talk to me. I'll be speaking there, and I will also have a booth there. So please come by in June, and that's in June. So here we go. As we start this thing, a little housekeeping is please type in questions, and we're going to take them. Uh, if there's, if the producer can handle it, then she will be handling that. If uh, I will get through my presentation and I have not answered your question, I'll be delighted to be able to go back and handle your question. So I'll tell you what. Let's find out about the mind. Let's find out about emotions. Can I turn this up anymore? Well, I'm totally on. Okay. We're, up as We're up as we can get. Um, we might be able to look at the mic down here. Okay. We're as loud as we can get. I might, I'll might. i tell you what. I'll talk louder. How's that? So, let's say what actually produces successful trading. Let's take a look at it. Ultimately, most people will work like crazy to develop their methodology, to develop their system, and they will tweak and they will tweak and they will tweak those elements thinking that they're going to find the discipline and the impartiality to become successful traders. Somewhere along the line, about usually five to ten years into the line, they finally figure out that they also have to do something with themselves. So there's actually a platform, okay? There's actually a system that cr creates successful trading. The first is you got to have a trading system. You have to really have that platform that really delivers for you. The second is you really have to have a methodology to manage risk. Without that, you don't have an edge. And as the guy who before me said, you're gambling. However, the piece that most people really forget is themselves. You actually have to develop a psychology of self that you bring to your trade room to use the vehicles of methodology and of platform. And until you do that, it's going to be against you. And first, what actually blocks what actually blocks peak performance in trading? The truth is the first one is not recognizing that the mindset that you bring to your trading is the single most important factor. I can't tell you how many times when I'm talking with trader education folks is that they say, Randy, I want to tell you something. We can teach methodology. The problem happens is when they get their mind in the trading and it goes bonkers on, they can't use our methodology. So it comes down to that. The other deception, and this is a big deception in traders until they finally come face to face with themselves, is that they believe that discipline can be found in tweaking your system to produce greater certainty and less fear. That's a huge roadblock. And the last one is actually not recognizing that you are the problem that keeps showing up in your trading. And until you do that, you'll experience pain. And most people experience pain by losses in their trading account. So what do you do about this? Well, what we're going to do here today, we're going to explore five essential skills that traders have to develop to become successful. The first one is emotional regulation, where you literally have to regulate fear and impulse. You have to be able to disrupt that fear from allowing you not to push the trigger. The second is we're going to be talking about developing mindfulness as a tool. And it's absolutely important because otherwise you stay in mindlessness. And that's the one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to be trading from a mindless standpoint. Third thing is once you've developed mindfulness, you start waking up to this internal dialogue. And everybody... A lot of people don't like to think that, oh my gosh, you mean I have voices inside my head? 
Absolutely. If you don't recognize them, just think about you're sitting there trying to pull the trigger and you will hear all the voices, all the thoughts in your mind. Then, what we're going to be also exploring is how to bring empowered elements of your personality into awareness rather than trading from your disempowered parts of the self, okay? Then, we're going to look at intentionally redeveloping the internal dialogue, all these thoughts going on inside your head for peak performance trading. That's what we're going to lay out today, and that's what we're going to do. So let's start by looking at the first essential skill, emotional state management. And where we're going to start is actually asking a question. What is an emotion? Most people end up thinking emotions and feelings are substitutes for one another. They are vastly different. A feeling is an element of an emotion. An emotion is something much greater, and until you learn, you will not be able to learn to manage them. The truth is, from a neuroscience standpoint, an emotion is any triggering that creates a deviation in a standard, familiar, sensorial pattern that the brain has already established. That may sound academic, but it is powerful. The point is, the only time that you don't have emotion is when you're dead, and that's not what we want to do. You do not go in and put your emotions at the door and trade emotionless. What you do is you choose the emotions to trade from. Impartiality is an emotional state, and it's really good for trading. Discipline is an emotional state, is very good for trading. So, it's actually the disruption to pattern, and out of that, emotions come up. Now, <clears throat> what happens? Lack of management, lack of emotional management, a fear in particular, is what bonds you to the pattern of losing. The truth is, fear absolutely hijacks objective thinking, and it cuts you off from your potential. It creates a fear-based herd mentality, and then you and your trading becomes bonded to the 95% of the trading pack driven by fear. And suddenly what happens is you make your trading decisions outside of your trading plan because now you're in fear, not in objectivity. And it's based on avoidance or impulse. And this, my friends, is where the transfer of capital from 95% of traders to the 5% of traders who have the discipline and the impartiality to trade. That's where it happens. And it starts with emotional regulation. So what let's do... Let's really break this thing down and take a look at what an emotion is, and you can begin to see how you go about working with emotions, both disrupt, manage, and create the emotional states you need to be in. First element of an emotion is arousal. You will have known that by if you've ever felt your armpit sweating, if you've ever felt your gut churn, if you've ever felt your heart racing, if you've ever held your breath, that's arousal. When you're trying to pull the trigger and you're fr frozen, you will notice the stiffness. You'll find the tension in the body. You'll find yourself not breathing or panting. If you're in a trade that's going south on you, you're going to find the whole thing. If you can disrupt the arousal of an emotion, you can, you can put yourself in a position so that it doesn't sweep you away into fear-based trading. The second thing, and probably the most important part of emotion for us to know about, is motivation. Remember, an emotion is emotion. Emotions are about movement. They are going to make you do something. And ultimately, the emotion is going to tell you to do one of three things. Attack, avoid, approach. If you're in attack mode, you, will have, you have overtraded, you have done impulse trading, and you have done revenge trading. If you are in avoidance, you notice that there's hesitation and you cannot get in the game and you just absolutely collapse. As you develop the ability to manage emotions, you can trigger something else. It's called approach. Approach is this mindfulness that we're going to be getting to and it allows you to separate emotion from who you think you are. It's very important because the other element of an emotion is meaning. Meaning are these self-limiting beliefs that become associated with the emotion. 
it attaches itself, it becomes fused to it, and suddenly what happens is you are suddenly looking to trade not to lose because you think you're inadequate. At the very core, that's the meaning of self that starts trading. And this is why you trade your beliefs. You trade your beliefs. And your beliefs are going to show up, and it's there are the meaning that you bring to the trading. The fourth part of an emotion is feeling. That's what everybody feels, okay? That is only the subjective experience of an emotion. And as a trader, what it's really useful for, what it's useful for is to let you know the emotion is there. What you need to do is you need to get very good at finding the feeling so that you can regulate the arousal, the motivation, and the meaning of that emotion so that you can trade effectively. The last part is something I just gloss over. It's really part of an emotion, but it's uh, temperament. It's the genetic predisposition that comes that you come equipped with naturally. We're going to be only working with the first four. I can't do anything about can't do anything about God. So let's take a look at the process of fear as an emotion in trading. We first start with arousal. All of a sudden, you're sitting there, you're trying to pull the trigger, you've been looking at setup, you've done evaluations, you see an entry point, and all of a sudden, you just start going tense. It's readying the body for action of avoidance or perceived threat is what it's really doing. That's what fear is doing. Your emotional brain can't tell the difference between a psychological discomfort, like it happens in trading, and being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger. That's the problem. You have to make that distinction yourself. Then what you discover is you start having short, shallow breathing that cuts off oxygen supply to the brain. Okay, And this is what contaminates thinking. You literally don't have blood supply that supplies the oxygen that your brain needs to be able to think. You're in fear. You're not in thinking anymore. Then the body tenseness, that's the preparation for the, for the flight. Suddenly you have this racing heart that triggers all this stress, all this cortisol and adrenaline to the body, and now you're jacked up and you're about to get swept away. And then, suddenly, rational thinking, which desperately is needed to trade effectively, has been swept away by the ticking time bomb of fearful thinking. That's the process that has to be interrupted. Has to be interrupted. And how do you do it? Well, let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at this area of meaning. What you're going to discover in my other workshop about the, the nine roadblocks, we go through specific fears that traders have in trading. Out of these, what I'm showing you here are the four self limiting beliefs that all those fears come from. The first is inadequacy. That's when you say, oh my gosh, I'm just not good enough. What, what, how stupid can I be to have thought I could have traded? What am I doing in this life? Not mattering. I just can't prevail. You know, I, I, it just, I can't do it. Unworthy. Unworthy, just not deserving. You don't deserve to win. A lot of times when you start becoming successful, you blow yourself up. And the truth is, is that there is an unworthiness element of meaning inside you that doesn't want you to achieve success. And powerlessness, that's just giving up. That's the victim. Any threat to the emotional brain is interpreted as the fear of death. And all other fears come from these four. This is what you really need to get. So, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at emotional motivation. This is the other element of the emotion. Avoidance. You avoid perceived threat. That's when you're hesitating. And what avoidance is, it's either going to run, that's getting up and leaving the trading room and escaping, hiding, you might distract yourself like crazy, freezing, that's trying to pull the trigger and realizing that uh, you're absolutely frozen in, in terror, and submitting, that's just, that's just letting go and giving up. Okay, that's attacking. Remember, perceived threat, this is what the brain, if unless regulated, is going to do. Avoidance or it's going to attack. It's going to attack the perceived threat. This is where you start overtrading. This is where you start impulsive trading. And this is where you start revenge trading. You're in attack mode. And what it really means is you're not managing your emotional nature. And unfortunately, whether or not you like it or not, if you're going to become a really good professional trader, 
you're going to have to learn to manage your emotions because ultimately when you're in a very good place, a really good mindset, what you do is you approach the perceived threat and learn from it. You open. This is where mindful trading occurs. And it's what we're going to be looking into here. So, let's review this thing. Here's what you need to know. The brain and mind on fear. First of all, from an evolutionary standpoint, your brain was designed to be a negative assessment machine. It assumes harmful intent. It's got that bias. It's like uh, I describe trading as surfers in an ocean. The truth is, is that uh, if you're in Hawaii and you're working with 30, 40, 50 foot waves, you better bring skills to the journey. Depending on the state of mind of the trader is how that wave is going to be rode or whether or not it absolutely wipes you out. The wave, the ocean, doesn't care. It doesn't even know you exist. But what you bring to it, your own beliefs, what you bring to that wave, that's what's going to happen. If you have evolved yourself so that you have a very mindful, highly disciplined, highly impartial state of mind, you and the wave can ride together. If you approach that wave in fear, which, by the way, is the bias of the brain, you're going to wipe out. Second thing, very important, your brain does not distinguish uncertainty from fear. It was not developed that. We were, our, your brain is not, is not designed for trading. You have to make this distinction. A long time ago, in a place far, far away, that's when the connection between fear and uncertainty got glued together. And you are going to have to regulate the brain and the mind and emotion so this does not overwhelm you. Because ultimately in trading, what you're doing, what you're doing is you are managing uncertainty. And you're thinking probability. Your emotional brain will never do that. Now here's the, and here's the circuit that starts happening. The brain organizes you to avoid uncertainty and fear and it creates a comfort zone. And this is really difficult for a trader to get past. Then, what the brain does is it forms self-fulfilling patterns based on the avoidance of fear and uncertainty. This is why you keep doing the same stupid things over and over again. You go, what was I thinking? You weren't. You were in fear. The patterns go on automatic and you dominate your state of mind. And you find yourself in fear. And most likely, most traders actually lose long before they start trading. Because what happens is they come to the trading room in a state of fear. And they are fear-based in their observation. This is what has to get absolutely derailed. Suddenly, and out of that, you end up trading from avoidance or greed rather than from calm authority. This is, half, this is the part that you have to learn how to move beyond. Now, there is a glitch. There's a glitch in the brain. And it's just the way it is. And this is how it stops you from following your trading plan. And this goes back to something that you really need to grasp. And this, this slide right here, for those of you who really want to master the inner game, this is one that you really need to really think through. Again, the brain does not distinguish fear from uncertainty. It is biased to seek certainty. And it will create any sort of explanation that allows it to produce uncertainty even if the explanation is dead wrong. And here's the way it works. Uncertainty, now this is the human brain, produces ambiguity. Okay, so that's what trading is, is a bunch of ambiguity. Out of ambiguity comes confusion. And to the brain, if you experience confusion, it is going to be interpreted as a threat to life. So you produce fear. And this is the whole, this is the whole shooting match right here. So, the problem is the socially linked emotional brain then herds and stampedes. You're all in fear. You've got this fear. And suddenly people who know how to produce discipline and impartiality can just simply step back from that and allow people to trade from fear while they trade from impartiality. And that's how the transfer of capital happens. So, so now we have uncertainty leading to ambi ambiguity, ambiguity to confusion, Confusion to fear. 
Now, this is exactly, this is exactly where emotional regulation, the very first skill, this is where the journey begins. Because ultimately, you're going to have to interrupt the arousal and motivation elements of fear. This is what gives you the ability to manage the emotions so that it's not sweep away rational thinking. And the truth is, is I, the way I teach, I teach breathing and relaxation as key elements in emotional regulation. And this is, a, it, it, I actually train it to the point where it becomes a conditioned to reflex. Fundamentally, this is what the deal is. Your breathing is an element of a particular emotional state. It's part of the arousal part. And as you, if you breathe rapidly, or if you stop breathing, what you do is you cut off oxygen supply to the brain. That's the first thing that happens, so you can't think. The second thing, as your heart races, what you're doing is your heart, and as your breathing starts really accelerating, it also accelerates your heart rate. Your heart rate then just triggers all the adrenals, and all of a sudden you have the stress chemistry in you. However, if you were to stop, and if you were to start breathing diaphragmatically, what you would discover is that you would be cutting off the gasoline to the fire because fear cannot coexist with diaphragmatic breathing. I want you to hear that. Fear cannot coexist with diaphragmatic breathing. Then you add progressive body relaxation to that mix and you're taking away, you're taking away two massive elements of the way an emotion gets its power to sweep you away. So, this is important. I teach it. It can be taught by breathing and relaxation. Herbert Benson did this uh, a number of years ago, and he was able to create something called relaxation response. This is the this is the starting gate. This is the starting gate of emotional management. Because next, once you get calmed down, once you have control of your body so that it, it just can't, the fear can't just sweep you away, then you get to the second skill, mindfulness. And here, mindfulness is becoming aware of the embedded biases, the self-limiting beliefs, and the thoughts that drive your perception without you knowing it. And this is all about trading. Remember, you trade your beliefs. And do you know what you believe? This is a really critical moment. And in mindfulness, what you discover is that you and your thoughts are not the same. Seems weird. As we go on, you're going to see what I mean. And in mindfulness, you develop the ability to produce an observer of your thoughts, the coming and goings of thoughts. You don't attach yourself to them. You don't fuse to them. You become observer to them. You begin saying, what part of myself, what part of my personality is showing up here? And it becomes interesting. And at this particular time, this is when you start developing freedom from your historical pattern. And literally... The way, the way it would happen in trading, here's the way uh, a trader described it to me. He says, Randy, observation, mindfulness is like going to a football game. Now, this is American football. This isn't the rest of the world's football. This is that little weird ball that bounces strangely. Is that if you go to a football game, it's like being up high above the stadium and looking down. And you have absolutely no emotional attachment to either side. You don't care which one wins. And that frees you to be able to observe the offense and the defense from a totally different perspective. You see what they're doing, and you can act on it. That's mindfulness. So it's like taking a pause, stepping back, and watching the game with no emotional attachment to outcomes. That's what you would find in mindfulness. It's a powerful, powerful skill to develop. Because... Actually, what happens, this whole notion of identity, I, ultimately, our brain adapts us to the historical circumstances into which we're born. That's what a brain does, okay? Before you can think, your sense of self is already organized for survival around these identity-influencing factors. The problem here is that your brain organizes you to survive in circumstance. It does not teach you to thrive. The problem is that what you, your brain adapts you to as familiar pattern, what happens is you start creating those patterns because those patterns 
have you. You don't have patterns. The patterns have you. And this, you'll see this is why you keep doing stupid things over and over again. They go on automatic, and we become blind to them. Amazing. Remember, you do not have beliefs and thoughts. They have you. And ultimately, you trade your beliefs. Mindfulness is used as a tool to bring our self-limiting beliefs into the light of awareness. As long as you believe that the Holy Grail is out there in some uh, new methodology, some new system, some new bells and whistles, you miss the whole point. The point is, is you trade your beliefs. If you have effective beliefs, they're going to show up in your trading account. If you have ineffective beliefs, what you're going to do is you are going to move your capital from you to the people who have effective belief systems for trading. So... That's how I develop, and it can be, fortunately, it can be reorganized. So, if we grasp, as mindfulness is a tool, it becomes the means we use to bring our self-limiting beliefs into the light of awareness. Without mindfulness, these self-limiting beliefs just simply take over your mind while trading, and you just keep on, keep on, keep on wondering, why is this happening to me? Why does this keep happening to me? This biological pattern merging with psychology. That's what it is. Now, and to really clarify this, what I want you to do is think about, have you ever done a review? And you're looking at the review and you go, what happened? That was crazy. What in the world? It, I'm totally out of my trading plan. Why did I trade that way? There you go. That is pattern. That is blindness, self-limiting belief. And it sees you. And now you wake up in a different emotional state, not dominated by fear, and suddenly you see differently. Imagine being able to decide and actually choose the emotional state that drives the state of mind while trading. That's where we're going. And you will hear this stuff inside you. Are you sure? Are you sure? And ultimately, what happens... People in fear-based thinking, in their blindness and their mindlessness to it, what they do is they trade not to lose rather than trading to win. So now what we have, we have we, now we have mindfulness and we have an observer. Okay, Now, this is where it gets really interesting because what we do is suddenly we start taking a look at these thoughts running in your mind very differently. Because suddenly what we begin to realize is that self-limiting beliefs are given voice in your thoughts. Okay? There's a huge difference between labeling these thoughts as internal chatter versus internal dialogue, noise versus substance. So I'm just going to get rid of the noise. What happens is you need to tune into the noise because it's telling you what the problem is. When you begin to see, oh my gosh, I need to listen to this to find out what it's telling me. Because this is where your self limiting beliefs and the emotions that they are tied to, remember that it, meaning becomes embedded into emotion. They are given voice in this historical internal dialogue. And the truth is, you're born into this, you adapt to this, and you actually come to believe that it is you. And that's just simply not true. That's your mindlessness, or what in the Eastern religions would be called maya, or maya. Now, the real key is how do you go about tuning in to the self-limiting beliefs of your internal dialogue? First of all, you develop mindfulness. First of all, you start producing emotional regulation to actually calm things down. Instead of going at 150 miles an hour, it starts slowing down. When it starts slowing down, you begin to see these thoughts, and it's not as idle chatter running in mind, but you're going, okay, what part of me is, what, what part of me is showing up here to trade? And ultimately, you begin to realize there's, there's the limitations. But what does it actually look like? How does this historical internal dialogue, how does it actually show up? What you're about to see is pretty startling, okay? If you grasp this, you can really truly change the way you trade. The internal dialogue is, comp is actually like a dance, and it exists between an inner critic and an adapted part of the self. This inner critic have you ever noticed that, you know, the brain is this negative assessment machine? You can walk on a city block and you can turn around and all of a sudden you, you, you've already made up all these negative stories and outcomes and stuff like that. That's the inner critic. When you're judging yourself, when you're calling yourself stupid, when you're actually saying, oh, you can't win, you can't win, it'll never happen. 
fart, go fart, go fart, go fart. What you're doing is you're listening to an inner critic that either judges, condemns, or criticizes you. It's not teaching you. It's judging you. That's the inner critic, and it lives within each of us. Now, the second part of this is the adaptation to that internal voice. Okay? By the way, the inner critic, a lot of it, if you're doing transactional analysis work, it's generally called the critical parent or the nurturing parent. It's the critical parent in this case. It doesn't have to be a parent. It just simply comes from wherever it comes from. The thing, though, let's take a look at the adapted voice. This is the one that is in correlation and dance with the inner critic's voice. The doubter. I can never win. I don't know. Jeez. Is this a good trade? What if I lose? What if I lose? Chicken little, negative appraisal. You know, golly, everything looks horrible. I don't, I just, you know, everything I see is bad. And what do you think you're going to find? The gambler. Don't leave any money on the table. I'm going to get it all. That's just, uh, you, you go past your target profits and you just go on and you say, I just can't take a reasonable thing. I have to get everything. The perfectionist. You have to win every time. Every time. Even though, even though you know that trading, even with the greatest of traders, is a game of probability. They may make an occasional methodology mistake. They may make an occasional psychological mistake. But even the great traders are going to lose 40% of the time probability. And yet, if you're into perfectionistic thinking, you're already set up to spiral to self-destruction. That, and it's all about either mattering or inadequacy. You can't make a mistake. Well, the truth is, is you're going to make mistakes because that's the way the brain learns. The entitled one, that's the greedy one. The con, that's when you keep lying to yourself. The fraud, that's pretending to look good. That's like being in a uh, trading room and having all these people talk about how great they're doing when, in fact, 95% of traders are losing and you're the only one. And it's almost like they, they live a virtual reality. Orphan, that's the one who is fearing missing out. And if you experience fear in trading, this is what Carl Jung would call the orphan. The saboteur, that's when things are going a little too, going pretty good. You're putting some good days together and all of a sudden you start thinking, oh, this is too good. I'm going to blow it up. Well, there you go. Saboteur. Alpha. That's generally the, uh, the corporate guy who comes in who's uh, had to take no losers, win, 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 I got to win. And he comes into trading and blows himself up because the truth is, is you don't tell the market what to do. You find out what it's willing to give you. So there's this dance between this inner critic and this adapted self. You're born into these self-loaning beliefs, but that's no reason you have to stay stuck there. What I ask you to do is to really look at this and decide which one really fits you, which one of this mixture actually expresses. And, and um, send it in. You know, we're not going to do a poll here, but what, if you can identify this element of self, it's in identifying this element of self that you begin to get control. Okay? So... And here's what I ask you to do with it. As you're listening to these, as you're listening to thoughts and you're slowing them down and you finally have figured through mindfulness training that you and your thoughts are not the same, here are the powerful questions that you begin to ask. First, what is this thought saying? Say, are you sure? Are you sure? And then you ask the question, what is the emotion attached to this thought? Fear. Fear of loss. And then... What component of your internal dialogue is associated with that emotion? If it's fear, it could be orphan, it could be chicken little, it could be doubter. And then you also hear that criticism, you'll never make it, you'll never make it. And you begin to go, okay, I know who these elements of me are. I have a very destructive part of myself and I have an empowered part of myself. I'm just becoming aware of how destruction sneaks in and blows my trading account up. And then you ask this question, is this thought voice true to the conditions of your trading plan? If it's taking you out of your trading plan, you know this is a destructive element of self and it needs to be confronted. So, but what do you do about this, man? We get into all this, uh, we get into all this stuff and you start going, well, what about all these thoughts? And here's the deal, my friends. This is when you open the inner game and suddenly you begin to envision your mind anew. You see it as a trading committee where your beliefs are being traded. And the question is, I ask all of you, is who controls your trading committee? To be honest with you, most traders 
at this point, when they produ- the mi- mindfulness and they've come to internal dialogue, what they realize is they have been asleep at the wheel and they have been totally blind and mindless to the internal management of the inner game that is required to produce peak performance trading. If you remain mindless, you continue trading from self-limiting voice. Now understand this. Thoughts in your mind give voice to your beliefs that are driving your trading. Think about that and really work through that. Being mindless of the different voices within you just simply leads to fear-based or impulse-based trading. You have to become an observer. You have to become mindful of it. Disrupting the grip of that fear opens you to the potential that also lives within you. You have the power to invent the thoughts or conversations that run in yourself, okay? And this is where I really want to look. This is the fourth skill. This is when you start developing the committee of the mind rather than just pretending there's just thoughts in my head and it's just chatter. Now you realize, oh, no, this is a whole, this is a whole shooting match. Developing these currents of thought is everything. You begin to awaken the heroes living within the self, and this is where it gets incredibly interesting. And here's something you need to get. In the same way that fear and judgment reside within you, they're destructive and they're there, okay? So does discipline. So does patience. So does courage. So does impartiality. These elements are there. You just simply haven't developed the mindfulness and the regulation skills to take your attention, put it on those elements of the self, pull them into your awareness so that they are participating in the internal dialogue that you've been calling your thoughts. Now, here's the deal. It can be done. And generally, the techniques that I use to help this thing is that I go to something called memory enrichment, where if you've had a memory of where you stood firm, where you felt the discipline, where you felt the impartiality, where you felt the courage, you can develop that into real-time state of mind. If you've ever been inspired by a hero in a movie or in real life, you've experienced that part of your own self waiting to be developed. Hollywood is all about taking archetypes and developing them because they stir in us. It's like um, a lot of men really relate to Maximus in the movie Gladiator. What that does in us is it stirs at the very level of ruler and warrior within us, and we feel that part of ourselves awaken. So this leads to, well, what are these parts of the self running around in me? I use a, a language of Jungian archetypes and bond it to peak performance trading. And archetype is something Carl Jung and then later Carol Pearson described as an inherent, permanent, indestructible element of strength embedded into your biology and psychology. And if you're human, they're there. It cuts across all culture. It's there. And they can be brought into awareness. For instance, that what we call discipline, this need for discipline, is actually in Jungian work, is called ruler. That part that we call patience is called caregiver. That part that we call courage, that we have to have courage to pull the trigger, push through our fear. In Jungian work, that's called warrior. Impartiality, absolutely necessary, is called sage. With work, these elements of self can be cultivated so that they're conscious aspects conscious aspects of the internal dialogue. You don't have to drift into fear. What you can do is you can intentionally produce a state of mind, okay? And that actually brings me brings me to actually intentionality. When you develop these elements of self, you change the committee of the mind that does your trading you discover that the answer has never been out there in tweaking your system. The answer has always been within you and redeveloping the internal dialogues and beliefs that actually do your trading. That's the power. That's where the Holy Grail really lies. From here, it's not like fears go away, but what happens, you confront your fears from a position of strength, approaching, rather than a position of weakness, avoiding or attacking that's where you reinvent the self. And suddenly you find yourself translating and transforming your self-limiting belief 
into life-affirming beliefs. Your internal dialogue changes its interpretation of uncertainty from fear to risk management of probability. This is where, if you grasp it, if you have fear, if you have judgment, you also have discipline, you also have courage, you also have impartiality. And this is where you begin choosing what reality is going to show up. So, how do you actually go about developing strengths? I use a system um, called symbolic representation. Uh, ultimately, what happens is when you look at the brain activity and it's firing all its electrical current, uh, that's just biological interaction, okay? That's neurons doing what they do. What the mind does is it develops a symbolic representation. And for me, you may be, you may find, like, for instance, with me, this ruler element of myself is very much related to Russell Crowe's interpretation of Maximus and Gladiator. I feel that. And I can actually access that element of myself by the symbolic representation that that provides. That's one way. Memory retrieval and enrichment is also another technique that can be used to, to do this. And this, what you're doing is you're going back to a specific memory in another domain outside of trading where you really truly exhibited discipline, courage, patience, and impartiality. And what you do is you rivet that memory and start pulling it forward. A great story about this is a trader I work with, um, the tra a trader I work with had a serious problem. He almost got shot in a car. He got carjacked. And what he did, though, is he was sitting there with three men with guns, and he was sitting there going, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? And what he decided, he needed to be very highly disciplined. He needed to be very patient. He needed to be courageous. And he needed very strong impartiality. And that's what got him out. The key is we were able to take that memory that was undeniable it really happened and started bringing it from the domain that it happened to the domain of trading and he began to move from fearful trading into very highly disciplined trading that's the way it works the key is you still confront and push through fear that's the ticket you have to do that no matter how you do that nobody gets a free ticket you just don't do you don't click your heels and get in kansas you still you develop the heroic parts of itself to confront and to transform the self-limiting parts. So, here's kind of the deal. If you trade out of your history, what you're going to be doing is ultimately it comes down to this triggering of uncertainty and risk. And the deal is that most likely, unless you do your work, unless you start producing these skill sets we've been talking about, uncertainty is glued to fear, and out of fear comes self-limiting beliefs. This becomes a psychological organization of self that actually is doing your trading. And you're either going to do impulse-based trading, which is attack, attack the threat, or you're going to be doing fear-based trading where you avoid, you run, you hide, you freeze, submit. This is where 90% or more of traders lose money. They're mindless that this is operating inside them, and until you do, you're going to transfer your wealth to the 5% who actually know how to do this. However, when you unglue uncertainty from fear and you start developing this committee of the mind that we've been talking about and you begin trading from a different position, what you do is you become mindful trading. And this is when you begin to intentionally trade with discipline, intentionally trade from courage, intentionally trade with patience, intentionally trade from impartiality. Those elements are there. What you've done is you've learned to observe them and pull them into awareness. And this is the goal. This is what you're wanting to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, fundamentally, there's really, there's really two choices here. You can continue in mindlessness, okay, where uncertainty and fear are associated with one another, and you're not trying to know yourself. And you still stay in impulsive, fear-based mindsets. You end up mindless trading. And you're blind to the, the power of the internal dialogue. And what you do is you stay unaware, unattainable to your potential. And the inner critic becomes a source of your self limiting beliefs. And your adapted voice keeps reacting from fear or impulse. And you continue into mediocrity. Or 
you can say, you know something, I get it. I know that I have to get to know myself. I know that I have to be self-honest. I know that I have to I have to find the courage within me to reorganize myself. And when you do that, you come down to emotionally regulating into a calm, focused mindset. And out of mindful trading, you have command of the internal dialogue rather than it having command of you. And suddenly what you discover is you trade from discipline, ruler. And within that discipline, impartiality shows up. That's your sage. That's the one who, tra who trades according to plan. You have the courage to pull the trigger. That's your warrior. You have your passion, your love of trading. And you have your patience, your compassion to be able to not beat yourself up. And when you make mistakes, what happens is you bring compassion. And you develop what I would call a compassionate warrior that trades. This is the trader's state of mind. And this is the goal. And this is where, you know, ultimately we've gone through, we've gone through five powerful skills that are interlinked with one another. My hope, my hope is that you have learned important things here. My hope is that in being exposed to the five skills of peak performance trading, you know the path that you need to follow to develop the potential that lives within you to trade. I hope you now know the elements of an emotion and that they are unavoidable. You are going to have to face the fear and you have it within you to do it. My invitation is, uh, my invitation is come to my website. It's, uh, down there. It's the traderstateofmind.com and there's lots of really cool free stuff. There's lots of articles. There's, there's, uh, quantitative studies that help you really assess, uh, whether or not your impulse are grandiose and you're trading. There's all sorts of different kinds of things you can explore. There's books. You, well, my, yeah, my book is there. I'm author of a book and it's about trading. It's about this very stuff that we've been talking about here, except much more extensive. It really allows you to get into it and see it. And if you're really serious, if you go, you know something, I know that I'm the problem and that I'm going to need to do something about it. If you're ready to actually say, you know something, I've done this long enough to know this is the area I need to do. It is what separates me from my potential. If you're there, my invitation to you is to simply go to the website, hit contact us, and ask for a free consult. It's about an hour. It's free. And you will learn powerful, powerful stuff about yourself. And you'll be able to make an informed decision about whether or not you want to re-engineer the self to become a great trader. And I really thank you. I really thank you for coming. Here's actually a question. What are some potential ways to become aware of, aware of your thoughts? Uh, I love, what I teach in my work is I have people start keeping a journal, uh, not a trading journal where you're writing down your methodology, but actually a journal where you're writing your thoughts down. Then you go back to those four questions that I showed you a little earlier and you start saying, there's the thought, what's the emotion? And then when you see the emotion, you start attaching that to an element of your personality and saying, that's the peak coming out. Then you ask the question, is it true to plan? And if you, um, and I'm looking for inner critic, adapted voice. I'm looking for the discipline, the ruler. I'm looking for the courage. I'm looking for those elements of self and partiality. And I'm naming them and I'm learning how to pull it forward. That's how I do that. So let's see. Any other questions, my friends? I have thoroughly enjoyed myself, and we're on time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would really like to also, again, appreciate Maud and Vicky and the folks at FS Street because these guys do a great service. They do a great service, and they have, they have deep concern about the welfare of their traders. Great organization to work with, great organizations to cooperate with. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much, and have a great day.